today at my favorite cut flower farm. And here's where you guys need to help me. How do you pronounce it? Pocasset. Pocasset in Pocasset, Oklahoma, which is just a little bit southwest of Mustang, kind of south uh, east of El Reno. And anyhow, this is so much fun. And for those of you who have followed me for a while on my channel, you may remember a video that we did way back when on Simple Acre Farm, when these guys were at a different location, but now we're here. And so it's just, it's absolutely beautiful. And I'm here for very selfish motivation, which I will, I will share with you a little bit later. But for right now, for those of you who don't already know Hannah and, and her parents, everybody introduce yourself. So I'm Joel Davenport. Hannah. I'm Kristen. And this is Eli. Yeah. He's <laughs> and, and this is Eli. And you guys have been in this new location for? Well, we moved. Yeah, a we started a summer U cut last year, about in July, and we've officially moved out here in August of 2021. So, so, so this is kind of interesting to me because I think cut flower farms is kind of the new retirement ideal of some people. It used to be you're going to go someplace and start a winery. Mm -hmm. Okay, now because cut flower farms have become have been so romanticized, and they're so, such special places that I think it's kind of that idea of oh you know, retire or make it your livelihood to have a cut flower farm. So that is what Simple Acre Farm is. And, and very briefly describe, you can, you can, weather permitting, which hasn't been really very often we, recently. Yeah, we've gotten about five inches of rain this week. Yes, five inches of rain. So, <laughs> so you do do you pickets and you can just go to simpleacrefarm.com mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sign up to do a you picket where you pick and compose your own arrangements, which is one of the reasons I'm kind of here today. But people can also book a photo shoot or something like that if they want Correct. if they want to come out. But what, what we're really here today is to pick their brains and their expertise. I can remember the last time that I visited you guys, Hannah demonstrated to me the Xenia Wiggle test, which I did not know about. And it was just a brilliant little tip for me to bring home. So we're going to share with you today four or five tips along with some of Kristen's uh, favorite seed sources and seed varieties that she is growing on the prairie of Oklahoma right now. So let's start out with our first seed selection. Well, let's start out with our cut flower number one and probably the most, I would say other than zinnias, maybe the most popular cut flower that people grow in the summer and that would be sunflowers. And traditionally though, I think of the kind that I've grown in the past, like the mammoth Russians and things, and they're beautiful and they're dramatic, but they're one shot wonders. Right. So once they bloom and you cut them, they're done. So here is our first tip and seed variety for growing uh, sunflowers that will be more productive so that you'll have more blooms to bring inside. So tell us about this variety. So this is the green burst sunflower. And they, um, if you look in here, we have pinched these at about, about eight to 10 Thanks. inches. Yeah. I'll just snip off the top of that sunflower so that we get more usable stems. That oh, come wow. Out. So yeah, whereas this would have just been one stem, now we have four or five. And it even looks, granted they would probably be smaller, but it even looks like if you cut this one short here, you'd even get secondary blooms if, you know, if you wanted them. Right. But, and, and let's see, Stuart, let's get one because this is fairly early in the season for sunflowers, but look at this one. So how big a cross are these going to get? These aren't gonna be huge. I don't know, a few inches maybe. And will these have a dark center or a green center? It should be green. Green, okay. Tell us the name again about this. These are green burst. Green burst, and is this, where is, what's the source on this? Is You said most of your seeds come from Johnny's. Most are from Johnny's. I believe it's Johnny's. So instead of one cane coming up, this variety, look at this, out of one, this is exponential growth. You get one, two, three, four, five, six at a minimum. 
yep. six canes off of this one sunflower. And that is a lot more flowers for, for <laughs> sure. it's math. A lot more for your space and for the money that you're putting into it. The other thing is, Hannah, by making it branch, don't you think then that when they're kind of cuddled together like this, that one plant would support the other plant so when it rains they wouldn't flop over? Would you think that? So I think that would be another reason that this was a really great variety. And I bet Hannah knows if you want your cut flowers to last longest, what time of day do you cut flowers? Kind of like by lunch. By lunch? Usually when it's coolest, so morning usually or maybe evening. Yeah, because around here, it starts getting hot around lunchtime. So that definitely makes sense. So I, I love this. You can't pinch all varieties, though, can you? No. No, on the single stem, if you pinch them, you're not going to get a usable stem. So you got to keep track of which ones that you're planting. It's always a fear when I'm pinching them to make sure it's not the single stems that I planted on the other side of the garden. Okay, important to know. Now, the other <laughs> thing that's really vexing for me is that sunflowers because i don't my garden is so small i don't have a lot of room and Stuart, if you would just kind of do a sweep of just how much space she has here i don't have a lot of room to grow sunflowers early on i have to plant them a little bit later in the summer and there's adequate growing season left for them to mature and set a flower head but my problem is that i plant them they germinate and then the cutworms get them so how do you get around that so i'll come in <laughs> all of these we actually started indoors in 72 cell pots and then we planted them all out here probably after about three weeks and we might have been a little late on that but by the time they're that big it's really hard for the cutworms to come attack them yeah and there and and it also helps with weed competition right. i guess right so that yeah. makes me feel better because i kept thinking what am i doing wrong or should i be protecting them in some way and so your end around to cut worms is go ahead and start them inside or start them in a pot or someplace where they're not going to be near cut worms then plant them out they're tough plants they can still get established even though it's hot right. yeah. and they'll be fine okay so see now i feel better already Cut, yep. cut worm dilemma solved. Yeah, because we, we were just like you. We started some seeds and the cut worms just took out whole rows early in the spring. So. And it's very demoralizing. It is. We're trying to figure out what happened. And then, yeah. But you said your cut worms come early in the spring. Mm -hmm. My cut worms tend to come later in the season. Ours were about the first two weeks of April is when we saw them the worst. Yeah. And I think sometimes we talked about this a little bit. You think, okay, so I've got cutworms, so how do I treat them? Well, sometimes you don't treat them. You just outsmart them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so with that. And they're pretty smart. <laughs> <laughs> are we, are we semi-smarter than a worm? <laughs> That's a toss-up. Okay, so that is our first tip. Pit, uh, plant a branching variety. Pinch them out when they're about eight to ten tall inches tall. And at the end of this video, we're going to have a list of some of your favorite varieties to try. So let's move on to the next most popular popular flower in your cut flower garden. The next selection that we're going to talk about isn't probably one we would think of as a classic annual, but boy, it's an easy annual. So what is this beautiful, expansive summertime right here? That is feverfew. Feverfew. And this is, uh, I believe, is it, is it tanacetum, Kristen? Yes, I believe so. And, and this is a green variety. I have a gold variety that in years past has been really vigorous in my garden, but because it was such a dry winter, I didn't have as much come back. But boy, if anything to me looks like it screams summertime and, and summertime on the farm, this does. I agree. And I, I don't know about you guys, but I like using it just in moss. I, I, I don't think anything is prettier than a huge bucket of these on a blue and white check tablecloth. That's, is it? that's what we have up in our house right now. It's just is it really? a big bunch of it, yep. Yeah. Okay, we did not plan that. <laughs> we did not plan that, but I love it. And now it has, and here's my question of the day, because I should remember and I don't. You guys may know. Uh, it has some, Feverfew has medicinal qualities. 
it's an er considered an herb that has medicinal qualities. I think one of them being for, for headaches and things. But do you guys know? Okay, so there's I my- I should know, I'm a pharmacist. What, <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> um, okay, so, so that would be interesting to know. So as, as you're a pharmacist, pharmacist, but not necessarily an herbalist. That's correct. Okay, that's correct. so that's my question of the day. You guys tell me what it's, what it's good for. And not only that, how, if, if you do a tincture, tincture of Feverview, how you would, how, how do you think you would do, make a tincture of Feverview? Would you like steep it like a tea or? Yeah. Um, the other thing that, that I love about it, but I also find kind of interesting is this is one of those flowers you now see in the cut flower trade. I've even seen it at like Trader Joe's and places like that, but it grows effortlessly in your own garden. So if you want a easy go to seed, comes back everywhere, almost can be in a problematic way, then look no further than, than fever few. The other thing about it though is, and it, it, this kind of bothers me, but again, this might also be a portion of that question for the day. Usually when I see it in stores, it's, it, it's listed as chamomile, and it's not chamomile, mm -hmm. though it no, looks I have like some it. Chamomile over there that we've been using for tea, just for our, ourselves. Yeah, yeah and because it different. smells so good, but it's yeah. definitely different. So a lot of times in stores, I've noticed that it's been mismarked as as chamomile. But I love this, and I just and I, it's also one of those kind of almost has a late summer quality to it that it looks fresh this part of the summer but it also can it really also is the quintessential kind of late summer mm -hmm. late summer look so okay so here's here's my question for you guys what's your fa just don't take too much time to think about it <laughs> what is your favorite cut flower seed it, cut flower that you seed annual sweet william sweet william mm -hmm. oh you Probably zinnias for me. Zinnias? Yeah. Yarrow. Yarrow. You like yarrow? Yeah. Well, good girl. Eli, what's your favorite? You <laughs> like the snapdragons. You like snapdragons. And he's 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 over there. Um, default. He's yeah. looks like. Speaking of making a tincture, <laughs> look, he's over there doing something. Uh, he, I think he, they're feeding butterflies and worms and stuff. <laughs> well, caterpillars. Oh no. No, no, talk about an idyllic childhood. Okay, so the, so I, I would say that our take, take it home tip with this is if you want something that will go to seed and come back year after year, definitely Feverfew is something that is very, very easy to care for and makes a wonderful cut flower. It lasts and, forever. Yes, Amazing. yes. And, and the master of the house says it looks, it looks really good in moss with a blue and white checked. We don't have a blue and white checker, we but don't. we have it in a big vase. <laughs> but you have it in a big vase. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you're fudging a little I, bit. I was fudging a little bit. <laughs> okay. But we have it in a vase and it looks awesome. Yeah. And it does look awesome. And I also think, here's my other tip. I think it looks great in kind of rustic containers. So like buckets and bins and baskets and things right. like that. Yeah. yeah. Things like that. Okay. So that is our number two fever feud. Now let's move on to number three. And now we're at number three, and we're just going to call this one Hannah's favorite. So explain to us, Hannah, what this row is. Yarrow. It's it, yarrow. Yarrow. Okay. And is it's what's is it called Achillea or Achillea or yes. however you pronounce that? Now, let's ask why. Why is this your favorite flower? Because I like them in full bloom and the colors. And the colors. So if you were going to cut a bouquet, would you like to cut some like these that were all in full bloom? Or, or do you like to mix some of the buds in with them? Or, or what is your preference when you're cutting a bouquet? Just the full bloom. You like just the full bloom. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Now this is a mix and this is, and even though this is a perennial, it makes a wonderful cut flower. And um, Hannah, so do you know the, the difference between a perennial and an annual? Okay, a perennial is a flower that comes back every year. You don't have to keep replanting it. But an annual, like the sunflowers and things, every year you have to plant new seed. This, you may also like this because it's kind of more magical because it just comes back on its own. So, um, 
So this is a blend. Blends? What blends are these? Yes, we've got a, um, a Colorado and a Summer Berries. Summer yes. Berries. Yep, it's two different. Well, one thing I like about this, first of all, it has a growth habit that's a lot less weedy, I think. Yeah. And the stems seem to be a lot tougher. Yeah. And the side foliage, which looks very ferny, and I like that because it looks kind of delicate. That's one of the things I like about it, Hannah. Um, is, yeah, show, show Stuart there how that looks kind of delicate and ferny. And so I think if you want that quality in a bouquet, I think it lends itself to that. But it also looks, again, very farm stand, very, uh, very summery, kind of ethereal. And the other thing is there are just, this is pollinator heaven. Yes, I mean, so just, many. Yeah, pollinator heaven everywhere. So in this mix, Hannah, because in this mix, Stuart, if you'll kind of show down this way, we have, they're primarily in berry tones and some, some white, but there's also a little bit of peach and even some kind of yellow mm -hmm. in them. But of, in this blend, Hannah, which is your favorite? This, one. this color right here. So it's kind of like in between the white. Show me again, Rex, so I can show them. Yeah, show. Sh Perfect. Thank you. And you kind of get two colors in one there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. And I think I, I, I like that too. The other thing is, as I've said it before, I'm going to say it again. My preference is for cut flowers for the summer. I, I do not a lot of mixed bouquets. I really like just one gorgeous swoop of one gorgeous type of flower like Hannah's Yarrow that I can put in a container. And these, if you were gonna cut this, Hannah, what kind of vase would you put it in? A mason jar. You'd put it in a mason jar. So she that's, she, yeah, because that's just, that's classic summertime, isn't it? Yeah, and it kind of speaks to kind of just a cut, a cut flower farm. So these are, are just beautiful. And the other thing I like about them is that even though we might, I might want to cut all one type of flower, I still get variety because in Hannah's selection, I have all different kind of gradations of this kind of plum color, but that they all speak kind of the same, the same language. So, um, and you'll be able to cut on this for how long? Several weeks. We've already been cutting on it for over a month. And then how, how hard, it, so this is a perennial, so how hard will you cut this back? Will you cut it back all the way to the ground, to a foot or whatever, once it's pretty much past its prime blooming time? We'll probably go pretty far down to the ground. Are you going to bring your goats in? <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so share that. Joel likes to bring his goats in to eat what's left at the end, so it's possible we'll let them come in and maybe experiment with a section and see if there's still plant left after they've come or not. What's funny is we got so much rain yesterday that our fence was staying, like the goats got out because the electric fence was staying like a foot of water. And Kristen <gasps> thought all these here. goats were just going to run down and like just destroy, destroy <laughs> your flower farm. So. But there's a lot of food there's between there and here. Yeah. yeah. Well, if, if you have a weed problem, there's your answer. There's yep. your try it at home tip. Yep. There's your try it at home tip. Um, get a goat. And, and Hannah would suggest if you're going to try a cut flower, grow. Yarrow. Yarrow. Okay. Now let's move on to, are we at number four? Number four. Let's move on to number four. Okay. We are in pollinator heaven for sure here amongst, what is this stand? This is Dara, the chocolate Queen Anne's Lace. And this, I have to say, is probably, to me, every year I come to your farm, it's the most striking thing. The, I, I love, love, love the color pat up palette. I love the flat umbral umbrella shape mm -hmm. of the flower heads, and I love the different kind of gradations of, of tone on tone in these. And to give some perspective, Stuart, look at how, how short we are and how tall these are. So man, these are going to get seven, six to seven feet tall, five to seven feet tall. That's pretty incredible. And they love the heat, don't they? They, they do. They'll just keep on coming and the, we won't be able to keep up cutting them fast enough. Really? Uh -huh. 
Well, I mean, look at it. <laughs> yeah, 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 there's a ton. Sir, can you give the long view of that? And I, there's, it's, it's so interesting because in their varying shades of flower development, it's like a completely different, a completely different flower head. So like, look at this one over here. I don't know if you can show that one. Look at that it. fluffy one right there. Can you see it? Yeah. I mean, that looks just completely different than the rest of these two, but they have that tall stem ethereal kind of, tr you can almost kind of see through the stems. Mm -hmm. And I love them. So will these, will you let these go to seed? These are some of our easiest ones that go to seed. So in the past, I don't know if we'll do it this year, but we'll actually come mow it down. We'll even till it up a little bit, plant sunflowers in here. And by the time we harvest the sunflowers, these have already germinated. And then we can just mow over the sunflowers and then here these come back coming strong because they'll actually overwinter really well. Okay, that is brilliant succession planting. Now these are tall and even though the stems are sturdy because you're growing, you know, your entire flower farm is growing uh -huh. with, with pretty much nonstop sun. Right. Um, but I see under here that you do have a support system and this support system consists of, what do we have here? It's just a horde nova net. I think it's about oh, three feet and we just you know, when, before they started flowering, we tried to support them. So especially with our winds that have been 70 miles per hour, it keeps them from right. blowing all over. Well, and, and not just that, but the real heavy rains. Real that's, heavy rains too. That's done yeah. some damage. And, and we just put these, oh, they're just kind of cheap uh, electric fence posts. Okay. That kind of is their support. So do you, so before these are tall at all, the, tall at all this would be our take at home tip. Mm -hmm when they're still very short, when they're just growing up, that's right. when you put right. the support it's on. Like about a foot tall, give or take. Yeah, because uh, one thing I did as a novice gardener was I would grow stuff and then of course it would fall over mm -hmm. and then I'd try to stake it. Right. Well, of it's course that, yeah, it's, it's too late. So here is, here's my thing. Um, I, I love, and this is the kind of thing I can't get at a florist, I can't get anywhere but at a cut flower farm like yours. So I'm going to start, I think, on, on a weekly basis. I'm going to just get a subscription with you guys. And, and I will just pay you, and every week you can tell me what is best in bloom, or I can, I guess, if you've got it in bloom, I can, I can select what I want. And on Thursdays, I'm just going to have you guys bring it to your door bring it to my door of, of just two huge or three huge however many I've got depending on what I'm doing huge buckets of farm fresh flowers because I I just love the drama of and it's it's also kind of trendy right now mm -hmm. that you probably have experienced that in working with some of your customers that they want great big bunches of, of one kind of flower right statement making flowers and this is definitely one of them that i i want to bring home just a huge huge cut flower bucket and i don't know if if uh if you guys are are is you're doing this especially for me or is this maybe some service you might offer in the future I think it's something we might try offering this fall uh you know we were telling you earlier we, we use rural water to water everything, so we've got to yeah. take July and August off and kind of get stuff going again in, in the fall. So. And, and for those of you that just don't know Oklahoma well, it just gets too hot. Be, you know, Stuart doesn't want to be out here. And, he do wants you, to be Stuart? in the swimming pool, right? He wants to be in the swimming pool, and, and also mosquitoes really don't uh -huh. like him. So, uh, or maybe they love me. Or maybe they love you. Yeah, it's, I should have reframed that, Stuart. <laughs> Forgive me. So we they are. They don't like you. <laughs> they, yeah, they don't. They don't like me. Happily, they don't like yes. me. So I'm gonna cut. This is this is one plant. I want to cut just a huge bouquet oh, of these mm -hmm. uh, to take home with me and start my subscription floral service. It. So okay, now let's move on to number five. Well, probably if if after sunflowers maybe, but if we were going to say what is people's favorite summer flower, I'm going to guess an easiest to grow would be what, do you think? Zinnias, for yeah. sure. Yeah, zinnias for sure. And so this is such a popular blend right now. What is, what is this seed blend? This is our take at home tip. This is the queen series, the queen lime series, and there's a few different types. There's a red and an orange and a blush and mm, I guess it's lime. Yeah, that looks kind of like 
lime envy. But what I am so impressed with is there's not one hint, even with all the rain we've had, of powdery mildew. It, so why is that? Early enough in the season, I guess. I'm luck. Usually, luck. Usually luck. Comes. Well, we try to space them out enough so that there's a little more airflow coming through. But so air circulation. Yes, that helps and full sun. You're not trying yes. to grow them in some shade. Now the other thing is, and this demonstrates it beautifully, that you've got this support in place mm -hmm. so that they will stand up and, and fly right. And I love, I love these colors, but you were saying these have how much more height? Well, I think they'll go another 18 inches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So they're just getting started. And I would think actually they'd be farther along except for we haven't had as much sun because it's been so rainy. Right. So here, here is another take it home, try it at home tip. Hannah, you must demonstrate the famous and explain the famous wiggle test. So if you're gonna cut a zinnia, demonstrate the, the wiggle test. So you like to get your fingers like a scissors and wiggle it. If it's like kind of super wiggly, it will wilt on you, but like the ones that aren't as wiggly won't wilt. They'll last a little bit longer. Yeah, yeah. So that just tells you that that maybe. Repeat that again, Linda. Okay, yeah. So you are saying that, like on this one, and and Hannah, would you say that's about four inches that you came down? Yeah. Okay, but above, but above the leaves, and do that again for us. Okay. So this one. It's still a little wiggly, isn't it? It's still a little wiggly. So if you were going to cut between this one and say this one, try the wiggle test on that. Yeah, that one's so stiff. It hardly wiggles at all. And so, yeah, so that you would cut with your expertise, you would cut this versus this one. Is that what you're telling us? Yep. Yep. Okay. Very good. And, and, I just, I lo don't you love the petals on that? Yeah. They kind of, they kind of have openings or something, mm -hmm. don't they? So of all of these, which is your favorite color? Well, pink. The pink. Mm -hmm. You're a pink and purple kind of gal. I, I, I think I would have probably guessed that. So the other thing about this is, will you guys do succession planting once this is harvested or will you even need to? So we did these first two rows we did at the same time and then this one that's not blooming was how much further maybe three weeks later so that is probably the only successions we'll do but these will last several weeks and we can cut we can just keep cutting on them for weeks and over in the distance I see some bee balm I see some rude beckia mm -hmm. and what I like about your sunflowers is you have some that is dark in the center and some that's light in the center. You have all sorts of different varieties because people are very particular yes. about their sunflowers, they are. aren't they? We're trying out some reds and plums this year too. So excited to see how they do. If the only there was a pink sunflower. I know. <sighs> I want a pink sunflower. Well, you're going to have to be a plant breeder then. <laughs> I think she will, she will be the first person to, to breed a, maybe a pink sunflower. You think? Uh, okay, so those are our five, some of our favorite summer flowers with some take it home tips. And then I'm gonna wrap up just showing some other ones that I think of more as kind of late spring flowers that you also have. And some of which I may be wanting you to save me some seed for. So thank you. Thank you so much, Hannah. You, you truly are a, a cut flower farmer. Will you have? She does work hard. Can we come back? Uh huh. Will you have some more tips for us? Probably. Probably. <laughs> okay, give me a high five on that one. Okay, very good. Thank so you. there you go. From Simple Acre Farm. To yes, yes, and from Hannah and Eli and the rest of this group here and all of the pollinators. We will see you guys in the next segment.
Well, my outfit of the day is kind of a garden safari look, I guess. My earrings are from Madewell. Love these earrings. My top is from Forever 21. My belt is Banana Republic. Uh, my skirt is, oh boy, I've had this skirt for years. The skirt is from, I think it's from Target. Um, my boots, <clears throat> which are all scuffed up and old, I've also had for years. These are from Sundance. My bracelet are just an assortment of, of fun African glass beads and actually a couple of friendship bracelets. Stuart and I decided to exchange friendship bracelets. So we have some that are kind of similar and then just a variety of bangles. Um, Stuart, have I forgotten anything? Oh, my coffee cup is from my darling friend Jan at Hungry Holler. She makes these and every time I drink out of it, it's my very favorite coffee cup I think of Jan. So there you go. There's your outfit of the day.